Let us pray. Come, what to beseech your Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel, made by his passion and cross, he brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ, our Lord. I mean, the divine assistance remain all with us. Healing 
that they may experience fullness, that they may experience God's grace. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that for all who celebrate the glorious name of the Blessed Virgin Mary, she may obtain your merciful favor through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. My dear brothers, you must keep clear of idolatry. I say to you, as sensible people, judge for yourselves what I am saying. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ, and the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. Look at the other, uh, look at the other Israel, the race where it does, where those who eat the sacrifices are in communion with the altar. Does this mean that the food sacrificed to idols has a real value? Or that the idol itself is real? Not at all. It simply means that the sacrifices they offer they sacrifice the demons who are not God. I have no desire to see you in communion with demons. You cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot take your share at the table of the Lord and at the table of demons. Do we want to make the Lord angry? Are we stronger than he is? The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, a thanksgiving sacrifice I make to you, O Lord. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make to you, O Lord. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make to you, I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make to you, O Lord. Rock fruit. 
nor again a rock of tree that produces sound of fruit. For every tree can be torn by its own fruit. People do not take figs from thorns, nor gather grapes from brambles. A good man draws what is good from the store of his goodness in his heart. A bad man draws what is bad from the store of badness. From a man's words flow out of what fills his heart. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Everyone comes to me and listens to my words and acts on them. I will show you what he is like. He is like a man when he builds his house, dug and dug deep, and laid foundations on the rock. When the river was in flood and it bore down the house, but could not shake it, it was well built. But the one listens and does nothing is like a man who built his house in the soil. With no foundations. As soon as the river bore down on it, it collapsed, and water ruined what that house became. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, This morning, we continue to celebrate God's mercy and God's love. In the communion of Holy Eucharist. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 today, St. Paul talks about the communion of the Eucharist. He talks about this communion. See, in the old, in the, in the time of Jesus, when you offer a sacrifice to your God, you offer what is called a communion sacrifice. Even the Jews would offer communion sacrifices. That what the sacrifice symbolized was that I am offering this sacrifice to this God. And in, in, in the Jewish sense, to Yahweh. And when, that, when the priest offers the, sac the communion sacrifice, the priest will then take part and then he will give the person who offered the, the sacrifice part. And that person will eat that sacrifice. And that sacrifice, the person enters into communion with the God of whom they entered that sacrifice. So that's called a communion sacrifice. Now, Ju the, uh, Judaism was not the only religion at the time of Jesus. There were many other religions. And people offered sacrifices to their gods. And so all the sacrifices were communion sacrifices. So Paul here is writing, and we're going to read the in chapter 8 of 1 Corinthians, where Paul, in fact, was saying to the Corinthian community, well, if you eat food, offer the sacrifices, just the, the idols, remember, there's only one God, there's no other God, but God alone. So really, it really can't do you anything, but for the sake of those who are weaker in the faith, it is better that you don't eat it at all. But here Paul develops, in chapter 10, Paul develops his understanding of food sacrifice and idols. Remember, the Corinthians were living amidst and amongst Gentile people. And so they had friends, close friends, who were not Christians. And of course, these close friends would invite them uh, or bring the food. But we have, we have some, some prayers and we bring, we bring the food for you. What do you do? Is your friend, is a good friend, and you don't want to offend your friend. And that's why Paul is writing and saying, Well, you remember that the food offered to whatever God that is not Christ Jesus, don't worry. Don't worry, because there's only one God, Christ Jesus alone. However, Paul develops his teaching to them and says, The food offered to whatever God, and then you eat it, then you enter into a communion with that God. And Paul says, don't think the food is just offered to, uh, to anybody, but it's offered. Paul calls the offering that goes to the demons. And so Paul develops in a sense his teaching and his understanding of how we are to treat with persons who may bring us food that are offered to other gods for us to participate in. And Paul says, don't you know, 
that when you participate of the communion sacrifice, the Eucharistic sacrifice, a sacrifice of Christ Jesus that, that we recount every time we celebrate Holy Mass and we offer back to God the one saved living sacrifice that was that was crucified and offered up on Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago. And we enter into the sacrifice. When we participate of eating the body of Christ in Holy Eucharist, communion, and drinking the blood of Christ, we enter into communion with the sacrifice of Christ. And if we are not able to do so, we do so spiritually at home. And, and, and so Paul says, you want to make God jealous? Don't you know God is a jealous God? Don't you know that God is a jealous God and God does not like any competition? And so if you are participating at the altar of the Lord, Paul says you can't at the same time participate and in communion with other sacrifices. And so we have to recognize Paul calls the, the Corinthian community to a single-hearted devotion to God. He calls them to a single-hearted devotion. Remember Paul said, because what can happen, you can, you can cause other people to stumble and fall. When people see you doing that, then they can stumble in their faith and they can fall as well. And so that single-hearted devotion is important. It's important for us to recognize that what we do when we share, the word, the word is just koinonia. Koinonia is a Greek word, a Greek word that, that, that expresses a deep communion. And Paul sees it is our participation in the koinonia, the, the sharing of the seed. So when we participate in the sharing of the seed, it is more than just the breaking of God, the breaking of any bread. It is a, a deep entrance in which we enter into the very life of God because we participate, we eat his body and we drink his blood so that we in turn become like him. And, we, and, and that communion Paul reminds us affords us the opportunity to become one God. Don't you know that the one loaf that you break allows you to participate in communion, koinonia with Christ, but also that koinonia, that communion, that deep bond of unity is established and is nurtured at this altar when we participate in this sacrifice of, of Christ. And when we drink of the one cup, that koinonia is still present. That, 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 that fostering of that deep bond. Notice that the source of the koinonia is Christ. Our participation in Christ is not a social event. So church is not just a social event. Where we are like a friend, or I like this one, or I don't like this one. That's not what it's about. It's deeper than that. This deep koinonia, this deep community has, has its origins in Christ in our participation in Eucharist, which is the source and summit of our faith. That is the foundation of our faith. When we participate in that, we enter more deeply into the bonds with one another. So the basis of our relationship with one another is our participation in the koinonia sacrifice, the communion sacrifice at the altar. That's the basis. So it's a, a, a deeply theological experience, a deeply godly experience, and not just the coming together as a group of people to do something good. It's not just a coming together as a group of people to help somebody. No, that's, that's the, the, the Lions Club and the Forage Club and, and those other social clubs. The church is organizes itself and understands itself as deeply rooted and connected in Christ. Christ then allows us to develop and form and shape ourselves in a community of faith. And the church is built up. Every time we participate and celebrate the Holy Eucharist, the church is built up. When we are not able to sacramentally receive Holy Eucharist, we are able to do so spiritually. And that's what we have been doing. We are able to receive the Lord because the unity of the body still exists. No matter where you are, no matter where you are, once you open your heart to the Lord, you are able to receive the Lord and to be in communion. So the, the, the very act 
of communion. That's what we call what you, what you will receive is spiritual communion. Because you're no longer able to participate in the body and blood. You're no longer able to take sacramentally in the body and blood. But spiritually, you desire, you open your heart, and you receive the Lord. That spiritual communion unites us more fully with the Lord. And so, my dear friends, that's the foundation. That's the foundation of our faith. It don't get deeper than that. That is the foundation. And that's why Paul, in the, in the Gospel today, Jesus says, it is more than just playing church. It is more than just pretending to be Christian. It is more than just acting like a Christian. True Christianity is living out our Christian, our Christianity in real ways. And that's why I said, such, you would know them by their fruit. You would know them by their fruit. Because in, 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 in such cases, in such cases, she don't make out of She don't make out. And so eventually, what is in one's heart, it comes out in one's words and one's actions. And that knowledge is a knowledge that is given. So it's not enough just to say, Lord, Lord. It's not enough to say, Lord, Lord. But the deeper foundation is building, building our, our, our houses, our homes on, on the practice of the faith. And hence the reason I continue to, 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 to call all persons who come to church for whatever sacrament that, that you must practice. It's not just it's not just a superstition that you come because your grandmother is to baptize your child or your granny tell your child to turn when if, if, if they don't be baptized, they turn when they turn when. That's not a problem. It will be a good way. What is important, my dear friends, is your faith and that you practice your faith. It's not just bringing the child to somebody to throw water on them. Anybody can do that. But it is practicing your faith. That's the foundation Paul talks about. It's not just saying Lord, Lord, but it's a foundation. The foundation is living and participating in the Eucharist. That's the foundation. That's the foundation. When you participate in the Eucharist, is it Father, I know something about every child and every child crying every night? Yeah. But if you are participating, if you are participating in the Eucharist, if you are communing with the body and blood of Christ, then Paul tells us, are you stronger than God? What if you stronger than God? No one is. And if you are participating in the body and blood of Christ, you are in communion with Christ. There's nothing that can overpower you. There's nothing that can overpower you because you are in communion with Christ. And so very, the first thing you have to do is examine our lives and see where sin has entered our lives that prevents us from the deeper communion with Christ. And when we are not in communion with Christ, as Paul says, then we are in communion with the evil one. Then we are placing ourselves under the power of the evil one. We are placing ourselves under the influences of the evil one. We are placing ourselves under his decades and under his power. And so there is no middle ground when it comes to Jesus. There is no neutrality. It's either you're for me or you're against me. It's either you're for or you're against. And, and that decision, that is the decision we have to make. And if we are for the Lord, then we have to be in communion with Christ. To be in communion with Christ means, at the same time, to be in communion with one another. There's no individual Christianity. There's no me, my church, and my spirituality. It's always our we said, Paul says, the one loaf that we break. Don't you know it's a communion with the blood of Christ? Just as, just as one loaf is shared amongst many, we are one body, though we are many. So the, the very act is one which brings us into a deep communion with Christ. That's the foundation. That's the foundation. That's the foundation. And when you build your, your house, your life on this foundation, what may ever may come your way will rock you, will shake you, but it will not blow your house down. It will not cause your house to collapse because you have built the foundation on the rock. Mary understood this. The Holy Mother of God. The Holy Mother of God understood this. And she who knew Christ intimately trusted him completely. 
She who knew Christ intimately to be a son also recognized him to be her Lord. She who had communion with Christ in her womb, whose very blood flowed through his very, his very veins. She who understood him more than most, or did not understand him at times, yet she entered into a deep communion with him and became his disciple. She became a disciple of a son, listening to everything. He said, but more than that, doing it. Doing it. And he said, well, blessed are you. But blessed are you, Mary, for the, blessed are you, Jesus, for the, the, the breast you suckle. And Jesus says, no, no, no. Far blessed is he who cares the word of God and does it. That's Mary. And that's why she's blessed. And that's why we to celebrate the holy name, the holy name of Mary, because of her blessedness. As pronounced in the man of the garden in, in Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 1, verse 45, we begin, blessed and blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your own. Her blessedness is because she built her foundation on doing the word of God. Not just hearing and listening, but doing. Her blessedness is because she built a foundation in the communion that she had with her son. A communion that led her to the foot of the cross. A blessedness is a blessedness in which she never abandoned Christ, even though she didn't understand all that was taking place. But she maintained a following of him all the way to Calvary's cross. And so, my dear friends, today, let us celebrate in a special way the holy name of Mary. The one whom we can turn to and ask her intercession, and ask her prayers, and ask her mercy, and ask and ask her to intercede for us, her children, so that we too would one day be able to become in complete communion with the Lord all the days of our life when the Lord returns in His glory. My dear friends, let us pray. And so we pray this morning, Heavenly Father, for the many persons who may find themselves undecisive, indecisive, who may one day be participating in the communion of Christ and then another day participating in another communion. We pray that they will come to conversion of heart and mind to give themselves completely, totally, and fully over to the Lord. Lord, hear us. We pray, Heavenly Father, in a special way for all those who are undergoing their difficult moments this morning. Those who are suffering with cancer, we want to lift them up before the Lord and ask God's mercy upon them. I'm going to pray that God indeed will look down upon them and grant them His healing mercies. And we want to implore the intercession of Our Lady as we implore her, as we, as we honor her and her most holy name, her most blessed name. And so we, we lift up in this parish, Lord God, those who have asked us to pray for them and those who, who have asked us to pray for them in a private, in, in a private context. So we pray for Patricia John, but we, we remember Natasha Popper, our sister Anna Rees, and Captain Alexander. We pray for Suzette Wilson, for Natasha Gandrasi. We ask the Lord God your mercies and blessings upon these, our children, these who continue to undergo their own times of suffering. For the, other, for the others, Lord God, who prefer to remain unknown, we lift them up before Almighty God. Lord, may your grace be upon them, granting them healing and wholeness. May you minister to them this morning. May they not lose hope and faith in your power to save and deliver. May they not lose hope and faith in your power to heal. And so in the name of Jesus this morning, we pray healing upon them. We pray, O oh God, that your grace and mercy will reach out to them. That your grace and mercy will come down upon them. That your grace and mercy will be with them. Lord, that you minister to them in the power of your Holy Spirit. That they will not give up, they will not lose sight of the fact that you believe are the, are the divine physician, the Lord of 
hosts the power of Almighty God, Lord Garrus. We continue to pray for Sister Lucy Pinson. We continue to ask that God's grace and mercy will accompany her, that God will continue to grant her healing and fullness. Lord, look down upon her in a special way this morning and, and minister to her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Lord, enlighten the hearts and minds of the doctors and the nurses that they may be able to diagnose properly, that they may be able to administer, Lord, the right medication, the right, the right treatment, so that they may be used as instruments of healing and fullness. And, and that they may bring her to a place where she may experience the fullness of life. Lord, hear us. We pray, Lord God, for Alana Sanchez, as she will celebrate her birthday today. We give God thanks for the gift of her life. We ask that God's blessings and mercies would be upon her. We pray indeed, Lord God, that you will come to bless her and, and her family and children. Lord, we, we uh, we ask God your mercies upon them and we pray indeed for Damien and for all of the family that she would have left behind, the mother Cynthia and Derek. We, we, we ask the Lord God your grace and mercy. Grant them comfort, grant them peace, grant them healing, grant them fullness. Let them know, O oh Lord, that your grace and mercies is ever with them. And that indeed the good Lord continues to look upon her with mercy and love. He can rest her until Allah and Lord, and let the better light shine upon her. And may she rest in peace. Amen. We make all our prayers in the name of Christ Jesus. And we ask the intercession of the holy name of Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, for her grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death.
Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just for duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints. And especially as we venerate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as the echo of thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things, and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty, and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices be free and join theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we agree. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. May holy their bodies this we pray. By sending on your spirit upon them and the people, as they may become for us the oil and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he declared and entered the name of his fashion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out to you and to many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of the faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the birth life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to your palace worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body of the Christ, we may be guided to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember all your church spread throughout the world, and bring the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Jesus and our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Alana Sanchez, Alana, Alana Sylvester, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she was united with your son and death that is, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray. Now the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, the Spouse, to the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints of the Blessed throughout the ages, we may merit to be poet into the light, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, of glory and of his love forever and ever. At the same command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we will be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever 
and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those born to the supper of the Lamb. And St. Paul reminds us, the blessing cup which we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The bread and the grape is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in the one loaf. My dear friends, as we, as I invite you to spiritual communion, we pray that the God of His love and mercy will enable you with the grace that you need. That you, as you open your hearts and desire Christ, you may be brought into a deep and abiding communion with Him. That you may be brought into that deep communion, not, and not only with Him, that the Spirit of Christ will bring also us into communion even though we may be far apart. And so this morning, let us indeed open our hearts to receive again Christ's presence into our lives, into our hearts, and into our souls. Thank you. 
as she sings the Magnificat of God unto her son Christ Jesus this morning. As she recognizes Christ Jesus as not only her son, but also as her Lord, her Master, her Savior, and her King. We too join with her as we indeed exalt the name of Jesus as we honor the name of Mary. Let us pray. May we obtain the grace of your blessing, O Lord, through the intercession of Mary, the Mother of God, that from her, whose holy name we venerate, we may obtain help in our every need, to Christ our Lord. So again, a pleasure. thank you for joining us this, this morning for Holy Eucharist. All right, tomorrow, please, God, Sunday we have um, Mass at 6, and Mass will also include the we include the triduum uh, of the Holy Cross during that mass. So uh, the triduum continues tonight at seven at seven thirty. At seven thirty, that this is the triduum that I'm doing, preaching a virtual retreat to the parish of in Santa Cruz, the parish of the Holy Cross. All right. So the triduum leading up to the Holy Cross, which I think is on the fourteenth uh, of, of, of September. The, the, for the, the feast at, of the triumph of the cross. All right, so last night we had the first installation, uh, and the, the theme of that was the paradox of the cross, from curse to blessing. Tonight we will continue to look at, at the cross again. So I invite you, if you are so disposed, to join us at 7.30 with the, the parish of, of uh, Santa, uh, the Holy Cross of Santa Cruz. Uh, and, and then on Sunday, Tomorrow, please God, we will have it during the Mass, evening Mass at 6 p.m. We continue to encourage you to subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. When I last checked, we had 347 subscribers, and we're looking for 1,000. And why? Because we will then be able to stream across another platform, apart from the Facebook, which not everybody's on. We will then be able to stream across a YouTube channel that will enable us to reach many more of our parishioners so that they may be nourished, that they may experience God's grace and mercy is brought closer to them. So please, let's continue to, uh, to, to support that venture. This morning we have a workshop at 9 o'clock on hospitality. So, you know, pray for us as we continue to put things in place. The church will not remain closed forever. Right? At some point, we have to reopen really back. At some point. Might be in a year's time. When it does, we will be ready. We will be ready to do what God has set us apart to do. So our work continues. Our work continues. We continue to do all the make all the preparations so that when the church is reopened, then we will be ready to, to do the ministry. So we have that workshop today with the hospitality ministry at 9 this morning. You can Contact me or if you want to have a communication at the best days on Wednesday, call the office and make an appointment and we will have a virtual we will have a virtual meeting on the phone, WhatsApp or on Zoom. Alright? You can have a virtual meeting, a session on a Wednesday, and we'll be able to go to the parish. Um right, so do have a blessed weekend, you have a keep safe, practice all the important protocols that that needed and uh, so that our people will be protected against the ravages of this COVID-19 virus. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This our celebration is something end. Let us bring peace to love and serve the Lord.
Lord, have mercy. 